Hey, hey, welcome to a special bonus episode of the Therapist Take Podcast. Carrie and I have been uh, preoccupied with other things that we've had scheduled on during our regular Friday broadcast, so we don't have a new one this week for you, but we have some quality old interviews that we've done that still hold up to this day, and this one features none other than Donnie Van Curen, a really great couples therapist here in our neck of the woods. And I had forgotten how fun he is to talk to and to listen to. And there are still things from this interview that I use to this day with my clients in couples therapy. So without further ado, here's Donnie Van Curen. Um, you know, I, I parallel broken hearts to um, to loss mm-hmm. um, because I, I do grief counseling. So someone will come in and, and they've lost a husband or, or recently a son. And that broken heartedness of losing someone has a lot of parallels to the same feelings of someone whose husband just left them or whose, whose wife left mm-hmm. them or girlfriend, mm-hmm. etc. And so that's that emotional sense of uh, I just lost something. Now, the interesting thing is you're heartbroken because you had something to lose. Mm-hmm. Right. Yeah. Okay, so right. I, I've lost something. I'm grieving the loss of something. Now, right. what is that? Well, I'm grieving the loss of someone that I got to talk to in the morning. Mm-hmm. I'm grieving someone that I got to share a Valentine's with. Mm-hmm. So yeah. really that loss is I've lost something that I once had. You, you wouldn't have a broken heart if you never had anything right. or had a heart to break is, mm-hmm. is, is right. a way to say it. But I do think right. it's that emotional upheaval of someone taking something. I love what, uh, I don't remember who stated it. It's not mine. And they said the hurt of losing someone, the grief, Mm -hmm. is love with nowhere to go. Uh, Let's just take that from a broken heart. I have all these feelings and love. I have nowhere to put it. Right. And that's that's probably a pretty good um, understanding or explanation of pain. They're experiencing an immense amount of feeling that feelings that generally would be distributed into the relationship, relationship yeah, right? yeah yeah so now we're not put this yeah exactly right. where's that energy going yeah and then in our our society today that. we have so much comparison right so now i'm going and by the way i'm not like everybody else mm-hmm. which is a whole nother emotional mm-hmm. upheaval for us because mm-hmm. i i don't fit in i'm behind I, i'm not sharing with that person that person mm-hmm. now right. of course we're basing that on social media and we don't necessarily put out our bad day right, right. Right. So now I'm in addition to the hurt. I also don't measure up. Mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. I also don't belong to the club yeah. of people that are enjoying the relationship. Right. right. And Valentine's mm-hmm. Day is the perfect example because it is the mirror. Mm-hmm. Oh yeah. Right. It yeah. puts you up against everybody, and you're comparing. It's like right. a really highly magnified mirror, and you're comparing mm-hmm. it. Right. Your relationship or where mm-hmm. you are to everybody else around. Right. And if we don't have a sense of who we are. Which in today's world, especially adolescence, and you know, I don't have, I don't know who I am, so I am who you tell me I am. Right. And if you tell me I don't measure up, mm-hmm. whether you said it or I just mm-hmm. in, yeah. in taking that information, sure. well, this just further exasperates that. Mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. Um, and so, even really solid people that are in mentally and emotionally in a good place, mm-hmm. it's really hard to not go, wow, well, but am I really? To not be affected. Yeah, so absolutely. Right. Yeah. Uh-huh. yeah. So. One thing, you know, in our practice that we're working with a lot of people that have uh, broken hearts that th- but not a broken up relationship. Yes. Mm-hmm. I mean, it could potentially could go that way, right? Yeah. But mm-hmm. I'd say most, right? Mm-hmm. It's and that's tough and I've had that situation yeah. where people um, I don't know, stuck, trapped in jail. Uh, they just feel that sense of, okay, it's never going to feel better, and, and I'm, I'm stuck. Mm-hmm. Uh, I don't want to get a divorce, or I don't want to leave this person. I love them, or kids, or whatever the involvement is, mm-hmm. and I don't feel like I can go anywhere. Mm-hmm. And, and that's a tough place because, one, we don't think it's going to get any better. Mm-hmm. And, and I think I have, I'm challenged with making sure that we're not assuming something that, that we don't have any truth to. Mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. A lot of times we believe life will never change, mm-hmm. and, and we don't have that evidence. And so in, in order for us to at least survive that downturn, we have to at least appreciate that things could get better, and there are things. Mm-hmm. The other thing is taking inventory of what else do I have, and, and I'm sure you do that a lot. Mm-hmm. Yeah, okay, my relationship's really bad, or I've been a, have a broken heart, but what about my friendships? What about my health? Mm-hmm. Um, what about my intellect? What about my hobbies? And, and understanding to take inventory of not making it all about that one thing. And I think that, even though it doesn't make it all better, that allows mm-hmm. people to what I'll call survivor get through that really tough time. And I don't right. know if you've experienced mm-hmm. that as well. Yeah, mm-hmm. I think I think what you're speaking to also helps people get stable. Yes. Right. Yes. Because if you're so overwhelmed and devastated, you're not going to be able to even serve. You know, right. breathing is the best you can expect. Right. But if you've 
you take that inventory and you access those other parts of your life, I think it buoys you up. Right. And then I think you can probably do what you started talking about, which is grieving. Yeah, right. exactly. Exactly. Yeah. And you, But you're right. You have to have that stability to grieve. You have to have that wherewithal, that um, mm -hmm. um, health mm -hmm. uh, mm -hmm. to, yeah. to be able to be uh, grieving mm -hmm. in, a, in a good and proper yeah. way. Mm -hmm. It's tricky, right? I mean, mm -hmm. it's, it's an interesting phenomenon that I can grieve the loss of this relationship, but continuing in right. the relationship. It is fascinating that, that we can do that. Mm -hmm. Well, it's, know, it's the and, quote we talked about. Um, yeah. See, I, the brain has those two sides. You get emotions and logic. Mm -hmm. And I believe that when we're balanced, that enables us to be very effective. Mm -hmm. And I, that quote I got from Philip DeCourcy, emotions are like kids, don't put them in the trunk mm -hmm. and don't let them drive. Right. And, and I like to talk to my clients about that because I don't want them to lose their emotions. I, I don't think that's healthy. I don't want to stuff them in a closet. I mean, we have to, we have to experience those. Mm -hmm. But we also mm -hmm. don't want to lose the logic. Right. And mm -hmm. um, I spend a lot of time talking about you know, post-traumatic stress with my clients. So mm -hmm. if you've been driving all your life and you get hit, the next thing you know, for the next six weeks, you, six months maybe even, you can't drive. Mm -hmm. You're scared. Now, logically, you know you're as safe as you've always been. But emotionally, right. you're out of whack. Right. So at some point, you've got to get yourself to a balanced place mm -hmm. where you understand that the emotions are based on the wreck, not based on your ability to be safe. Right. Right. And so you're trying to balance yeah. that. And I think when people have heartache, it looks like this. Okay. I'm very emotional, right. and I'm probably not real logical. Mm -hmm. And sometimes I feel like my job is to bring the logic up sure. as the emotions are coming down to balance. Mm -hmm. um, and that's some of the things we work with. Sure. Yeah. So if, if someone, uh, whether a friend or a client or whatever, is coming to you saying that, you know, they have just experienced something mm -hmm. that, you know, they're talking about a broken heart. I mean, what would be the first steps yeah. for this person? The first thing I'm making, helping them understand is that it's going to take time. Okay. I, I just, I, I, you know, we, there's not a quick fix to that hurt mm -hmm. right. any more than if I lost a loved mm -hmm. one. Sure. It's just, you know, I want to, one, let them know it'll pass and it always has. Mm -hmm. yeah. But two, I want them to be understand that it's not gonna be an easy deal. Yeah. And then I'm, I'm wanting, just like we talked about, I want to make them healthy. I'm wanting to make them focused on, okay, how do I have a healthy day today? How do I mm -hmm. focus my attention one step at a time? What can I do today sure. to concentrate my thoughts in the right place? Sure. Uh, yeah. What am I eating today? Uh -huh. um, who am I seeing today? Mm -hmm. Who are some friends I can be around? How can I sometimes be distracted? Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Sometimes can I have things, exercise or things that are positive, but how do I get my life about not just that? Mm -hmm. It doesn't make it go away, that emotion's still there, but mm -hmm. allows me to focus my attention on some other areas while I'm getting through the pain. And how do you help people start to mm -hmm. associate pain with something helpful or positive? I hate to use that word, but yeah. you know, suffering like Carl Jung, right? I mean, legitimate yeah. suffering, Absolutely. right? It, that, that's a function that's a guarantee in, in, for all humans. I, I've always, uh, I'm always fascinated when we talk about, I believe the mind is either going to control the emotions and the emotions can control the mind. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. And I give the example of exercise. I'm talking about this actually tomorrow at a marriage conference that if you get up in the morning, you don't feel like exercising. Okay, you can follow your feelings and your mind will go, we're in bed, sounds good to me, sure. and your mind will just follow those emotions. Mm -hmm. But if you decide that your mind goes, bathing suit weather, <laughs> your mind goes, man, I remember what I felt like last time I worked out, then your mind tells your body, hey, this is what we're doing. Mm -hmm. But I feel a lot of times we're going to drive that train either here, mm -hmm. and I put that as emotions, emotions. and feelings, mm -hmm. or here, intellect. Mm -hmm. And sometimes our intellect can say it's just emotions. Yep. And our emotions go, Okay, we're good. And mm -hmm. with my anxiety clients, we do the same thing. Sure. I'm scared, but is this legit? Right. It, right. We, we do this with panic all the mm -hmm. time. Or we can tell ourselves, hey, we're fine. Sure. Now, I know we have injuries and our body says not to work out. We need to listen to those. Yeah. Yeah. But for the most part, I believe one is leading the other. Yeah. You know, that pain is real. The question is, then, then what do I want to do with the real pain? Right. Um, yes. I think the pain we accept and go, I don't like it. And, yeah. and you shouldn't. And uh, all of us experienced it. My wife, a couple months ago, was worried about my daughter and said, I just don't want her to go through any pain. I don't want oh, her to get yeah. hurt. Oh, sure. She said, I don't want her to get hurt. She's 22. I said, she's going to. Mm -hmm. And she goes, I said, That's, we get hurt. Yeah. It, it makes for better relationships. Yeah. Yeah. You're it makes for stronger. <laughs> no, <laughs> she's used to me by now. Um, it makes better relationships. But yeah. the reality is, if yeah. you go, haven't gone through pain, you will. Yeah. yeah, and and the only way to avoid it, and I, I was talking to a client who mm -hmm. lost a loved one. Um, we were meeting yesterday. I said I can take away the pain of a loss, 
just don't have any relationships. Yeah. Right. Yeah. And I asked him, I said, would you trade? Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. He said, no. And so we, we will give into the opportunity to have pain, mm -hmm. to have the opportunity to have a relationship. Right. 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 And I think that's the key is well, we're hurting because we're, we're putting ourselves out there. But we're putting ourselves out there because it, there's opportunity to have something that I believe everybody wants. Right. 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 And so I want people that are going through mm -hmm. pain to go, listen, it's okay if we end up somewhere where we want to be, right? right. Can, can, we, can we handle that if, if, if I can mm -hmm. tell you that down the road something good's going to happen? Right. Sure. Mm -hmm. Well, why don't we go there? Yeah. 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 Mm -hmm. yeah. Yeah, I've had similar experiences too, working with couples or um, a partner that has been hurt really bad. And, yeah. <clears throat> and one of the common things that they say, because they get mad at themselves for being hurt. Yes. Mm -hmm. You've yeah. probably seen that I too. shouldn't right? be hurt. Right? Right. I should have saw it coming. Yeah. You know, right. yeah. they feel think? foolish. And, and then um, after processing that, they'll say something like, um, I, I know one thing, like, um, I'm never going to let that happen again. Right. I'm never going to be in a position where I'll let that happen again. Right. And then I'll look at him and say, then you'll never be married. Again, right. Or right. you'll never be in a committed relationship again. Right. Because part of and I, and I just put your quote up there. Let me put it back up there. So we, uh, yeah, so <laughs> I get the quote, right. So, um, if you deserve, I mean, if you desire a life without loss, it will take a life without relationships. So I like mm -hmm. how you said that. Mm -hmm. It's not just that this is just how relationships work. It's what is required yeah. for it to work. Like you, you cannot put yourself in a position of, in a relationship and, and, and it work well if you're not vulnerable yeah. to feeling fooled or right. foolish, right? Yeah. One of my favorite definitions of love when I do, I'll do pre-marriage and I do a lot of marriage work, you guys are aware of that, yeah. um, is giving uh, someone the permission or opportunity to hurt me and trusting they won't. Um, mm. that's, that's the goal. Yeah, mm -hmm. That's that what exactly we're trying to get yeah. because I'm not going to have what I believe we're supposed to have in a marriage unless I open myself up to get hurt. Mm -hmm. yeah. And it's exactly what you were saying. So I said, hey, if you can get to the point where I give my spouse the permission to hurt me and I trust they won't, mm -hmm. yeah. that's where mm -hmm. that's what we're, and I, I believe what we're all searching for. Sure. Yeah. But of course, yeah. there's the risk of right. trusting that I won't get hurt. Yes. Right. And, th and I think that there's an, another important piece to this too that I want you to talk about briefly is that there is a concept, I think it was Janice Abram Springs, I can't, oh, I can't remember, uh, she, she wrote a book called uh, After the Affair, and then she actually wrote a book about forgiveness. And sometimes, I, I don't want pe people hearing this thinking that I need to be what Janice would call a, a cheap forgiver. Right. So right. in other words, that I'm so, oh, well, Donnie said that, <laughs> that I should lot, be. <laughs> we'll start using that. I'm going to tell mom what Donnie said. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Yeah. Um, but uh, that, you know, Donnie said that I just need to trust you again. Mm -hmm. Right. And just throw myself right back right. into it and right back in front of a train. Well, the thing you about know, loss so. that you were saying is that we learn from that. It's not that we never go back to the well, right. but we go back to the well with more wisdom. Mm -hmm. Um, I had a guy recently whose you know girlfriend broke up with him, and we talked about okay, so what was it that you've learned from right. the person that you started dating? What didn't you know prior? What, what are you going to take mm -hmm. with you? Right. And I think when we're hurt in a relationship, especially when we have to stay in, that means we mm -hmm. set boundaries. Mm -hmm. right. Boundaries should happen. They should say, "Listen, I'm not going to open myself up to get hit again, mm -hmm. uh, right. to emotionally or physically altogether. Right. Mm -hmm. um, I need to make sure I'm safe. If I'm staying mm -hmm. in, if I don't learn from my hurt." Well, then I set myself up to be hurt again. Mm -hmm. And even right. though we're saying hurt is going to happen, that doesn't mean that I'm not learning from it. Right. And yeah. in, in many ways, protecting myself from being mm -hmm. hurt again in the same way or yeah. in a different manner. So I'm, mm -hmm. I'm with you. We really talk about boundaries. Um, we really talk about what do we learn maybe in the next relationship. If you got hurt and you're not in a relationship anymore, what are you going to learn to take forward? Because you're going to take mm -hmm. baggage. Um, sometimes you're not going to trust very easily. Right. It's just going to be a part of it, and you're going to have to deal with that. Um, sometimes you're you're not going to expect someone to love you. I mean, there's a lot of things you're bringing to that that if you don't recognize and look for, you'll take it to the next one. Um, if you're just now suffering or feeling uh, or just experienced a broken heart, or you've been in it mm -hmm. for a while, and yeah. I often uh, you've experienced this probably too, where people are in it too long. Like yeah. I've told many clients, yeah. that's too long. Yeah. You yeah. know, uh, we, we need yeah. to get you well, you know, uh, reach out to somebody, uh, whether it's a minister or a mentor, 
or a therapist, just reach out. And someone and so, that's not going to, in my opinion, where we get in trouble sometimes when we reach out to someone that actually fuels that that loss. Um, you can get together a friend and they'll, oh yeah, it's bad, mm -hmm. or or they're not aware of letting you know how good they have it. And, and so yeah. reach out to people that are healthy, yeah. that when you leave, you feel a, a new sense of strength, you feel right. like you can move forward, mm -hmm. um, because we're getting stuck when we're grieving that long, we're continuing to feed mm -hmm. uh, right. the same man Animal that's keeping us there and sure. and I want to encourage those that are that are struggling that you don't have to be stuck on that now there's a period of time that I believe we grieve whether it's a loss mm -hmm. of someone or heartbreak but I don't believe you have to live there mm -hmm. and I think over time doing the right things you can get to a place where um, you at least are in a new normal mm -hmm. which right. I think is better said than the because you're not normal because it's, you've lost something but it's a new normal well, I hope you enjoyed this bonus episode of Therapist Take featuring an old interview with Donnie Van Curen. I must say I thoroughly enjoyed editing this one. I forgot how good of a speaker he is and how fun he is to listen to. And I really enjoyed interviewing and talking to him. Maybe we can get him back on the show soon. But in the meantime, please go ahead and give us that five-star review and say something nice if you want to in the comments. Please check out the show notes so that you can see links to any resources that we have and including links to Donnie Van Curen and his websites, as well as his social media. And I believe he also has a book. So go check that out. See you back next time.